Welcome to the wonderful world of fencing. This way, please. Let me show you around. First of all, there are three types of swords. Two types that can stab and one type that you can slash or whip with. The first one's called the foil and is the most beta of all because you can only touch the torso and only stab. It's also the most commonly used weapon, so you can see what the fencing demographic is like. Just kidding. Fencing is for cool kids, like... The second weapon, Ipit, is for the masochists with really a lot of patience. This sword has basically no rules, so you're allowed to just run up to your opponent, wind up your arm, and stab through them. There, but people don't do that because it'll probably lose you the point. And finally, coolest of all, the saber. No, not that saber. With this weapon, you can touch all the upper body to score points. But the best thing is that you can actually slash instead of slab, like a normal sword. In my opinion, it looks much cooler and hurts much less than stabbing, except when your collarbone gets whack. Games are played in a way where the first player to reach 5 or 15 points win, and you go back to the all guard line before starting another bout each time. That's roughly how it works, but watching this, you probably already know how it works, hopefully. I've been fencing for 3 to 4 years. And in that time, naturally, you accumulate a few strategies. Here's basically the lifetime of an average saber fencer. You start off being much too scared to move forward. Not only are you a beginner, but you don't move much, which makes it doubly easy to beat you. After you break out of that first shell of not moving, you're on to the second stage. This is when all you do is stupidly go forward as fast as possible. That's basically your only strategy. It's to attack. This is the stage I stayed in the longest, and is a crucial part of saber fencing. After that, you start to develop skills and defensives. You get strategic and start doing feints and fakeouts. Sometimes you might feel like a god and do a counterattack, or maybe even a flick, which looks like this. After I got to that third stage though, I started to get too invested in the strategy. Every touch started to need to have an element of specialty. Fencing is all about thinking, but if every new touch needed a brand new strategy, it would obviously not work out too well. I started to have a block. I wasn't progressing as much as the others. But one faithful knight, the fencer, the one that I respected the most in the club, the man, the myth, the Chad, was going to be my opponent. As we fought a round of 15 points, he was leading 8 points against 1. Things were looking bleak. That's a pretty big lead if you can't already tell. But there's a break when one player reaches 15 points. I have some time to think now. My coach isn't supposed to pick favorites. He goes up to me and says, Do the biggest lunge that you can do. Suddenly, I flash back to the months I spent stretching at home. It's time. And I do what he tells me to do. After that, my coach nods, satisfies, and goes, Not bad. Do that two out of three times. And then it started. Two out of three times, here's the Mega Waggle One Punch Lunge. It works. The other third of the times, I slide in a little faint, losing a few points here and there, and I catch up to him. We're tied at 10, but I'm exhausted. Catching up that many points isn't easy. We fight on, but I lag behind. One point at 13, 12. I'm about to give up. But then, I remember the words of my coach. No, it seems impossible. That's when Aaron Yeager comes up behind me and says, My ass tightens up. Summoning all my strength, I push through with a two-thirds strategy, a strategy that I left behind in the second step of my fencer lifespan. After that victory, I felt like I was back, like the old strategy of just using the biggest lunge ever was, and going in was back. It felt awesome. After that dub, I walked out, proud and sweaty. It was so epic. With this newfound strength, I surely could beat the upcoming competition, right? I didn't beat the guy from the club again, he's just too good. If this story interested you, there's a few videos up on my channel showing the guy I talked about from my club whacking me on the head with a sword. You guys should go check it out, but they're from a while ago. Anyways, that was my little story. Have you guys ever had an epic tale like this? If yes, please leave it in the comments. I'll see you guys next time.